Hi everyone, welcome along to House Polished. This is our episode five discussion. And um, apologies for Lisa, she can't be with us today, but she might be able to lurk in the chat um, for us. And happy birthday to Lisa as well. So happy birthday, Lisa. Hope happy you birthday. birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, Claire is uh, just a complete professional now talking about this um, episode. Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of like I'm kind of I mean I'm sure people have watched loads of reviews at this stage so I don't think there's any need to go through it scene by scene or anything like that no. and I kind of gave a list of characters but I'm kind of I'm happy to go wherever anybody wants to go um, or where you want to go with the chat or if anyone has questions for us or anything like that um, hello to Mackenzie and Sonny and John in the chat um Mackenzie and, and Johnny, I like I was so drunk in the pub yesterday, I just like invaded your chat and just went, <laughs> Am I supposed to be on this? <laughs> <laughs> oh there's Claire, how on. Like this. <laughs> oh no, wait. Uh... <laughs> so that sorry, funny. Mackenzie. Um but and for some reason I can't get the I don't know, I need to go back in and look at I need to go back in and try and get it. Oh and Mammy Shorthall is here. Hi ma'am, how are you? Um, Hi, Geraldine. My fella is still well, alive. Was, Your candle's still working. It was nice because we got to see the inside of an Irish pub, so. Yeah, in Switzerland. That was good. That was good. I, I mean, I'll be, yeah, you know, I can give a proper tour of Ireland when I'm home in October for Bunratty. I'll be down <laughs> Bunratty for my friend's wedding, so that'll be good. Anyway, polished choice, thoughts, rating, do you want to take it away? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'll go first with the polish choice. I had, didn't have time today to do my nails, so I painted a topper. I painted this lovely topper that Catherine gave me when we met last weekend. And underneath that, also another essence polish. I was in a kind of green sort of mood. So the base is this essence and the topper is the catrice but i do like the name of the green polish it's number 36 from essence shine and go and it's called say my name which is kind of a little bit breaking bad but it's also pretty much the demonstration that daenerys put on at king's landing was like here i am i've got all these titles say my name and she went from she went from beggar queen in the previous episode to queen of the ashes in this episode. So yeah, we well, we won't forget yeah. we won't forget her name. Yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> and what's your rating on this episode? I'm giving this a four. Are we doing out of ten? I forget yeah, which rating. Ten. <laughs> out of ten. Okay, I'm then. I'm going to give this. I think this is going to be my favourite episode of the season. So on that basis, I think I've only gone as far as eight previously. I'm going to go with nine. Um, the reason behind that, I know it's a really controversial episode, but the reason for me is purely because it's the episode I think I've thought the most about. It's been much more, it's just been on my mind really all week. It's been much more thought provoking than the other. A previous episode uh, there, there's maybe a, there's this, a, this one and then maybe episode two there's um there's a great chat going on here between john and my mum about polish um <laughs> i can tell you what my mom's favorite polish is it's catherine um made by the lovely cat who's also in the chat so hi cat and hi, our cat. Cat, thank you so much for coming along um so uh i completely agree i gave this a nine out of ten i went back and forth on whether it was going to be eight or nine but I, I like i found this episode incredibly entertaining i liked it as much on the second watch as i did on the first watch if maybe maybe even a bit more mm. um i laughed probably at places i shouldn't have laughed um <laughs> i like i laughed at the golden shower company which i'm watching which, which is what i'm calling them now um yeah. just completely pointless and so funny yeah. <laughs> just so funny uh i laughed at kyburn as well because I was laughing at myself more than anything else because there's no payoff. <laughs> but um, the that polish... was just so quick. It was just, wow, immediate. Just okay, bye, Kyle. Yeah. Bye, bye <laughs> Um, I cried as well at the Tyrion and Jamie scene. Yes, that was I emotional. did cry. Um, yeah. 
that was oh man that was great that was a great scene and um, but i picked this one from china glaze which is called smoke and ashes and it's from <laughs> their hunger games collection i just put a swatch up online for you and it kind of has the wildflower or wildflower wildfire colored shimmer in here as well um so Ooh, yeah it's kind of nice. in a blackened kind of maybe a blackened kind of green base um ah. but yeah they're having a great chat there in the, 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 the um so we both kind of went for green maybe in honor of Regal. poor Regal. yeah um guys i'd be interested to know in the chat what did you what would you give this episode out of 10 i i feel like i've said this the last two weeks this is the most divisive episode ever um <laughs> and wow and uh, i have to admit this week, the fandom kind of was depressing me a little bit. Um, yeah, I think people not just got. Uh, and I've seen, I've seen people have even like just left groups altogether and just like they're out at this stage. It's like, and I can understand why because it's just like as soon as you, particularly on Facebook, which I didn't really look at much this week, but particularly on Facebook, it's just like negative, 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 and people are totally entitled to that stuff, but. I do. I don't need all of that on my feed, to be fair. No. And I, it's like, it's not a, a comment on you. You're allowed to express whatever opinion you want, but then I can also withdraw from that because it's just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> and I just think it was just such a beautiful episode. Um, my the reason it's not getting the full nine out of ten is Jamie, 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 Jamie. Really, mm. really, I. People are talking a lot about how disappointed they are with Danny in this episode. Mm. Oh, man, Jamie killed me, especially because we, you and I were really not on the Jamie Brienne thing last week. Mm. And it just seems so pointless now to do to have done that to yeah. Brienne's character and now, like, for Jamie to go back to Cersei. There, like there, there are definitely... There are definitely a couple of real key players where... They've just, it is so obvious that they needed a bit more time to to explore how things were going to end for them. And it, it was just like, oh, no, right, quick, Jamie, we need to get him to Cersei. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of things seemed to be really quite rushed for some crucial characters. And it just leaves us all thinking, what? So... Yeah. In theory, um, I don't mind him going back to, to Cersei. It's just... Why have him sleep with Brienne? That mm. that's like I don't mind it. Like Ertash actually liked that ending. I didn't mind actually the crushing. Oh, thing. I thought, I thought the was, ending. Uh, yeah, I thought yeah, the ending I didn't was mind great. That at all. Yeah, I don't think that it made enough sense to us where Jamie's head was at. And um, just the you're like you say, stuff. you're off. <laughs> you're off. <laughs> you're off. Um, there are so many great comments in the chat. Uh, AJ, thanks so much for coming along. Um, what did you say to me? Oh, the Free Folk Reddit is absolutely brutal. I left Reddit years ago for that reason. <laughs> Ertash says, um, people are Daenerys fanboys. Such unfair critiques. I truly liked what she's done and totally felt um, okay with seeing her do it. So um, do you want to jump into Danny first or do you want to, where, who would you like to start with? Well, we can do. I think that's 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 the main issue, isn't it, for for most people? That's the thing that's divided the fandom, is the Daenerys switcheroo. I guess people see it as, but so, mm. is she crazy? Is this crazy? I mean, I, I feel think, like you yeah. you let her off the hook. You let villains off the hook by just labeling them as crazy, and you do, mm. you know, people who um, have like who go mad if you like for want of a better term don't necessarily do bad things right no but they this is a history the, the, I, the, this is a history perspective isn't it so you get what we actually know versus what what how this will be written in history and what people see absolutely and they're only going to see and they give you titles for it the mad queen mm -hmm. you know that's it mudstick i just feel like <laughs> it just um lets her off the hook yeah. Um, I'm also a little bit, I don't know if this is, if there's, I don't want to like beat this drum and normally I'm not usually one to beat this kind of drum, but I wonder, is there a little bit of 
sexism going on here because it's okay for Danny to do that and be called mad. But then when Grey Worm throws a spear at an unarmed soldier, yeah. oh, he's not mad. He's just that, doing, he's just following orders. That and was one of the worst bits of the of the episode. I, think, not I mean, worse he, could be, he could have lost his mind as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just find that a bit annoying. <laughs> I, I think, and I, I've said this in other, I've said this on Johnny's channel, I mentioned this last night on MP's channel, but it's not the, it's not the, 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 the actual what happened and how it ended that disappointed me. N none of it really is just the fact that I would have wanted it to be more, my reaction to be, okay, yeah, she's, that's the route she's gone and that's understandable, that's plausible, but the, the, the kind of, the jeopardy for me as a viewer being which way is she going to go? Is she going to go the, the the way of like, you know, the breaker of chains and being honourable and not hurting the small folk, not doing any of you, because we've seen a te kind of tested previously before in that respect. And she seems to have always gone the kind of honourable route. Mm -hmm. But this time it just felt to me like they'd maybe missed a crucial episode or two or three okay. episodes that got us to the point of like, edge of the sea of which way is she going to go okay she's gone that way and that kind of it's that's awful and it's horrible but i it's plausible and it kind of makes sense to me rather than oh my god daenerys would never do that and it's like yeah but you can and you can see the the, the sort of side by side cl compilation clips on on youtube of like no this is how she got to where she got to it's really easy to see look at all the examples uh, and i get that that's great but I don't think. Uh, I think this is. I think this has been foreshadowed. Definitely, this has been foreshadowed. But it's not been quite. And this is just to my taste. It's not quite been fleshed out enough, or enough. Yeah. Sitting underneath that for me to kind of go right. Okay, that that was horrible, but it made sense. So, I totally yeah. see that, and and and. I, I wasn't surprised that she did it. It's just, um, yeah, I agree. They didn't flesh it out enough. I also think that uh, a lot of this has, a lot of the problem is that in the in the show, maybe even more so than in the book, Danny is held up as an honourable person, Misa, and just this warm person, and and maybe a bit of this has to do with Amelia Clark being one of the warmest actresses you'll ever see, so charismatic, yeah. so sweet, and mm -hmm. and she has definitely bought that aspect of her personality to Danny as a character, um. But we have definitely seen both sides of the coin with Danny, and I agree, it wasn't fleshed out as, enough, and uh, Sonny has a huge problem with that, I think. Um, d d can't follow their own storyline, so it gave it a four out of 10. Yeah, so I can completely agree. AJ says, uh, there was a good comment there uh, duh, 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 about, AJ mentioned, sorry, oh, there it is. Even if you agree with how they did it, they managed to alienate a large portion of the audience, and we have to ask why that is. AJ, I'm kind of, I totally, I see exactly what you're saying. And I don't, I kind of don't know how they could avoid that. I think there's going to have the, just from their sort of professional experience, I think they're going to be okay from years previous. We're sort of chasing the, chasing the Red Wedding for that complete shock. And, and as book readers, that was really good of us you know we kept that really quite quiet from show only watchers and there was this and people weren't quiet. happy to lose rob stark show Awful. only watchers yeah, yeah really, really terrible but we all got over it and went oh my god this is why it's such such an epic show and they you know they dare to to, to sort of push the boat out a bit i think they've always in the back of their minds been thinking right we need a massive shock we need a ma which is fine even if George R. R. Martin gets to that point in the books, I'll be fine with that because I know that he will have done the fleshing out bit. I think the big, the big problem still lies ahead for D&D &D in the next episode. I'm sorry, I'm mixing in like predictions of the next episode. but I don't okay. think we can avoid that. I think, we, I I think, think yeah, we, we're going to have to sort of weave in some predictions throughout. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, I think the biggest problem for them 
they have to kill da Daenerys Targaryen before George does. Mm. And that is a huge, huge thing to have to do. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously they've killed the Hound, they've killed Jaime and Cersei, they're big characters in and of themselves, but killing Danny is something different. I think that's going to be a very different thing to have to do, and I think that's where the third twist is. I, I think book readers, it won't be a big twist for us, but I don't think even now show watchers, uh, or show only watchers, are necessarily going to expect John or whoever it is um, to kill Danny. Uh, in the way that they're going to kill her. I think that's going to be the twist. I don't know, guys, if you have any thoughts on that in the chat. By the way, if you have leaks and stuff, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Don't give me any leaks in the chat. I but um, I just want to say hello to Laura and the new, new Stamping Queen on the block. Hi. And Meridian <laughs> is here. Hi, Meridian. <coughs> and Meridian, just have things make effing sense. Yeah, I agree with that. I also agree with you, uh, Tak. I think, yeah, it, 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 if you... When I watched this, the, the episode the second time, I could see how things made did make sense. And it kind of, it made sense. I, I, I just think I wanted it to be more justifiable, if that makes sense, rather than, me, rather than my reaction, which was, oh my God, Daenerys, what are you doing? It, maybe it was the timing of, it just felt much, much worse that they had surrendered and I don't know in her rage, in her emotional, because I don't think it was mad as in a mental health breakdown type no, of mad. In the no, no, no. It was more just broken with grief. And as you say, attack, the loneliness, the betrayal, absolutely, utterly broken hearted rejection from John. So she hates everybody at the moment and she feels unloved by everybody. So she's decided, okay, I'd. This wouldn't have been my preferred choice. It's not something that I'm happy about, but here we go. We're going to have to go down the it's fear road, you know, rather than um, people love and respect me because clearly you don't. And everyone has been be betraying me and doesn't trust me. And, you know, I, this is a completely foreign land to me. And... I'm just not going to get, and, and not only that, I've got somebody right here in front of me that's a massive contender to everything that can break, break that can rip down everything that I want. So yeah, that's what all that was about. And in the books, because I, so I'm, I'm kind of torn on this all week because I don't know if, if George is going to have Danny do this in the books or maybe Aegon do this in the books. Um, but I feel like uh, in the books, Danny, we will see Danny's inner thoughts on this, maybe. Mm. Maybe, maybe mm. not, but I think we will. And I, I, you can see maybe what's flashing before her. You know, I, I, do, I, do I want another Marine? Do I want another, um, you know, another kind of disaster on my hands where the people don't really want me there? Um, is it better just to make them completely afraid and really show my force and strength up front? Um, I, I loved how they did that with the bells. I loved the tension. It was just fantastic. Um, the other thing, that, the reason I was torn all week was I, I wasn't sure if this is something that George has said, yeah, Danny's going to destroy King's Landing and George will obviously flesh that out in much greater detail. But part of it also felt like D&D &D didn't need to do that for for the for the I, unless there's something coming up now in the next episode where king's landing has to be in complete runes for the ending of this show but it really felt like they were setting fire to this series for themselves on their own behalf like this is it this is I, done I do we're feel done with this series like, there is there is that anticipation of, oh, you all think that we completely trashed it. Wait till you see what we've got up our sleeves in the finale. But I think everyone's kind of past that now. And it's like, I do, I'm, I'm too scared to know what it is you think you've got up your sleeve that will turn all this around from a p p plot progression point it of view. There's nothing. Um, <clears throat> no. There's some funny comments here in the comment section. I'm going to read this Meridian. In, in in how I imagine she's delivering this line. Do you think, do you, 
do you think if Jorah was still alive, she would have done this? No, she wouldn't. She wouldn't. <laughs> she would. <laughs> Jorah, yeah. Jorah would completely have, have stopped her from doing this, I think. It's one of the reasons that she is so heartbroken because her most trusted advisors and everyone that she cared about really is is now gone yeah uh and Erta says is that all you can do Cersei you are fearing me huh you all choose fear from me you didn't yes. surrender because you loved me it was erta has got a good commentary me. there in here what, yeah. what what may be going through Danny's mind during those few moments before she left the perch but yeah and we had that with Cersei I choose violence it doesn't end well for Cersei to choose violence it won't end well for Danny to choose fear um and this is George's, you know, I, I think that is in keeping with George's spirit of the books as well. That, yeah. um, yes, we have the talk of the bittersweet ending and all that kind of thing. But ultimately, he does want to show the effects of war, not just on the innocents, but on the people that perpetrate those wars, mm. um, whether it's just or unjust. So it is interesting. Hi, just me. And hi, Margaret and Danny. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, and Halcyon. Uh, Do you think, uh, hi, Margaret and Halcyon, Danny McKay, I and AU. I do. Mm, I suppose what I want to ask is, do you think that D Daenerys is kind of delusional in that she still believes that she can provide a a a, a a tyrant free future for you know for future ge generations she seems to think that she's this is like you know she's b breaking the wheel burning what burn burn them all she's kind of you know scouring everything everything's being raised to the ground for her to maybe build something back up again does she does she honestly believe that that's 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 the way to do it i mean i mean tyrants don't necessarily think they're building dystopias they don't necessarily think they're built they're being tyrants when they do this they yeah. think they're building a utopia you know yeah. and I, I sent you a message uh, after watching the preview saying it looks like the third tar targ reich yeah. that we're in. and yeah. that's like I, she feels that she's going to be breaking the wheel but really she's just putting what looks to be an even more brutal wheel in place. I mean, as soon as the Northmen get into the city, they start raping people. I'm sure the Dothraki were doing the same. Mm. Um, I I don't, it looks to me like she was burning everybody in sight, regardless of which side they were on. But I mean, the stuff that was going on, the stuff that was going on on the ground was awful. And the way we saw it through Arya's eyes and through John's eyes, kind of reflecting a little bit, just like, oh my God, what is she doing? But if you take away what was going on in the air and Daenerys on the dragon and just what was going on on the streets of King's Landing, that's, well, I mean, I was just kind of like, oh, my God. But Stuart, <clears throat> Stuart was watching the episode with me and he said, this is what it looks like when a city yeah. gets sacked. This is what it was like when um, when uh, Tywin's forces flooded in and, you know, the, the, and the city was sacked then. This is what happens. And um, you know, yeah. I mean, it, we we've we've seen Danny stop Drogo and his armies from raping and using rape as a weapon, and here she is entering a city, and nobody is telling these guys not to rape except John, mm. and it's it's just the irony of that is really interesting. I think you know, it's it's like those th the things that they say about Hitler. He's he loved dogs and children, <laughs> you know. It's, <laughs> He, you know, he was a really bad guy. He was like, you know, the worst. I think we can all agree on that. But you know, the with Danny, we've seen the worst of her, but we've also seen the best of her as well. And yeah, it, you know, it's it's one of those things that uh, it's it can go nowhere good. And but it questions you. I like the fact that it questions you to think about what what is tyranny, where what is the position of a tyrant who doesn't realize that there are you know they don't they think they're bringing something else and they, and also how history is represented and how that kind of filters down to the thinking of the small folk because it is throughout the books you can see you get a little taste of this when they're talking about gossip yeah. 
you know, ridiculous stories that you hear in the in in um, the wine keeps in in Kings Landing, all the ridiculous stories when people are having, having you know, those chapters where it's a real travel log type of chapter. And you think, oh, that's how they've got that. They've twisted that truth into that, into the. And actually, they don't really need to know the details. They just need to know the nickname or the the you know the 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 sort of um, punchline of the yeah. joke thing. They don't need to. So it's interesting to see how people's who, people is- who rule their public persona and and whether or not there's any re- even a grain of truth to that and this is this is why i loved this episode because it does still like bring up those questions that george is bringing up and that like i think as we as a culture should talk about more um yeah. the, the like if you like the new and the nuances of tyranny i know yeah. um as aj said Idi Amin loved animals his kids and max mass executions of people yeah and john yeah. says even the northern men so it's not just unsullied and dothraki and thanks for bringing up that point mm-hmm. john because one of the things that was great if you watch the inside the episode visually this episode is 11 out of 10 it's just unbelievably great um one of the things they did deliberately was to have the camera at the camera angle behind uh, Strickland and the Golden Company in the same way as it was behind John going into the Battle of the Bastards but the roles have been reversed so it's telling us that the north the north men are kind of going to be the baddies in this case mm-hmm. they're the ones coming to bring Fire that's, and interesting. Blood. that's interesting because they kind of do that in this episode on a much more on a much smaller scale individually with Varys. So you get that your the camera is behind Varys and you get the full effect of what it would be like to get a dragon flame in the face. You know, it's that point of view perspective from that camera angle. Um again with with Drogon looming over yeah. that. I mean, that was like, whoa, when he kind of came out of the shadows and she just softly said, Dracarys, that <clears throat> that does give you the impression visually of like, here's the baddie. Yeah, I want to come back to that actually about Drogon and Dracarys and all that. But Meridian has a point here. Um, John, the bloodlust of war and mob mentality. Uh, I think this is probably the first time we've seen John have to go to war uh, for an unjust cause. I don't think he's fully happy with it even before they take the city. I think he, I'm not sh- I'm not entirely sure if he's comfortable with the idea of Danny taking over at this time and yeah, he he tries to pull back in- instantly. Um just as you said there about the soft spoken Dracarys, I think that's another criticism that's coming up in the show a lot. Mm, yeah. uh, for this episode in particular how <laughs> Uh, the dragon suddenly had powers. They never had powers like this before. I actually think, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I wonder, does that have something to do with his bond with Danny? Yeah, it's and symbiotic. The stronger, yeah, yeah, the stronger the bond get, the more ter- turmoil, chaotic her mind is, the more emotionally hurt she is the stronger Drogon is or her, the, the better she is able to use. She kind of gives herself over to the dragon. She re- releases the dragon kind of thing. Um, yeah. Dro- Drogon take the wheel. And, and he does. <laughs> yeah. And and the, there is definitely a sense of when she needs him, he, he's there in some kind of protective capacity. I mean, that scene when Jorah died, and and Drogon kind of laid his head down and and sort of ra- almost wrapped his arm around or wrapped his wing, sort of shielded them. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> some funny questions here. What was the point of Tr- Strickland? Yeah, what was the point of the Golden Company at all? I, I I think it was Johnny might have mentioned this in his stream yesterday. Um, there's that sense of the writers squashing in storylines from the books earlier on and then having absolutely no idea how they're going to play it. So the Iron Bank, the Golden Company, Dawn, the Sand Snakes, all of those, let's just throw them in and say, this is something that's also in the story, but it's somewhere in the background and they've just not had time to do anything with it. So, of course, what they need to do is just kill them, just kill them off. I think it's also to build tension. It was to, like, it was to create 
a fight. Yeah. For, like to give a fighting chance to the crown as well. Um, AJ has a great uh, catch, a quote in here. Um, Jorah said to himself in season three, there's a beast in every man and it stirs when you put a sword in his hands. I wonder if she took that to heart. It seems like she didn't. Yeah. And, and of course, we saw Danny kill with her own hand for the first time in the long night as well and then lose Jorah anyway. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with Danny. Um, Margaret says, John, what happens if all the Starks leave Winterfell and go to King's Landing for trial or naming of the new leader? So I think she was asking AU, but we might come back to that in a, in our predictions as well, Margaret, because I really like that question. If you don't mind us answering it as well. I think um, it, all, it all depends on now. It's all about what you think can fit into 82 minutes and what will be meaningful and worthwhile to cover in those 80 odd minutes can we fit in a battle can we fit in a wedding can we fit in um i we... i don't know what's going to happen with the dothraki and the unsullied what happens to them when danny isn't around what do they do <laughs> the, the, uh, they're the... dangerous the only thing I can think of in my mind that would be a solution to that is the other side of Varys sending those letters out. So somehow, magically, these new uh, lesser unknown lords of you know Storm's End and High Garden and Dawn, Jose Martel, all these these yeah, new yeah. weird and wonderful characters, yeah. will somehow turn up to defend John's claim based on the letter that Varys wrote and that's how the Dothraki will be taken care of and the Unsullied. I, I, who knows? Because well, I, don't think, let's... I don't think they're going to bend the knee to anyone else, are they? Especially the Unsullied. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about Varys because he's the first person. Mm. I, we predicted that actually in our stream last week. Um, he's the first person that we see in this episode uh, and he is writing, and there's there, at least it's alluded to that he's probably poisoning Danny, which I think is why he's killed. I don't think it's just because he's talking to John. I think it's because he's he's poison. He tried to poison her, and that was discovered um, <clears throat> possibly by Grey Worm. Um, but Varys is sending out letters. I've heard lots of ideas as to who Varys is sending letters to. Um, mm. I think. Dorne, obviously, River on the Glovers, um, uh, the Citadel. Um, I was, this is now, again, I'm putting a little bit of tinfoil, and I know I've said his name about a billion times throughout our discussions this season. Um, Illyrio, potentially, as mm. well. Mm. Illyrio would have the resources, maybe, to help t to put John on the throne still. Um, yeah, in, so that's uh, someone that might be because it would be good to see that character come back into play. It'd be really good if he's the if he was the reason Danny's on the throne to begin with, and the reason she ends up losing it. That would be I think that would be interesting. But, uh, Lauren has just put it completely like in her own inimitable way, very succinctly. <laughs> he sent letters out to Illyrio to put shit in motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm kind of thinking, because I've been on the bang and the Illyrio drum all season. Yeah. I really want to see that character come back. Um, hi, Elamore. So nice of you to come by. Uh, yeah, I I just, I, in reality, I'm sure it went to a lot of places. I wasn't sure why he took off the rings. Is there something with that? Is there something important? Are they his only worldly possessions? It doesn't matter about the, the trinkets and trappings of being a lord. He was never a lord. He was just Varys. They just gave him that 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 name kind of notionally. But I think it was more a symbolic. He was defending the small folk. It doesn't matter about the, the you know, the, the gold and the jewellery and everything. There was something very... Um, like visually the pots that he was putting his rings and things into that looked like something that you might make a, a kind of poultice sort of mixture. Kind of like something. the Ceres. Yeah. Which, which, which yeah. Thing. So yeah, I don't know. I lo When I saw that scene and 
the first thing I saw when, when Tyrion touches him and Con Latil, who's like one of my favorite actors ever, he's amazing. And he just looks at him and he went, oh my God, that's the first time someone touches him. And yeah. it, when I was watching Inside the Actor, or Inside the, the episode, that's exactly, Con Latil came up with that idea. And the director asked him, why did you look at Tyrion like that? And he's like, Bar I've never been touched in the show. Varys has never been touched. And yeah. it was just like, of all the people to do it to him, it had to be Tyrion. To reach out and offer some humanity. And yeah. at the same time, telling him that, He's just betrayed him. So yeah, it was it was um potentially yeah. sacrificing his own humanity, yeah. like Tyrion's own humanity to do so as well. Um yeah, the, so the, the I I loved visually, I mean I, I mean everybody is saying it because it's true. The CGI, yeah. everything was on point with this. Um so yeah, let's talk a little bit about Tyrion and we can talk about predictions if you want as well with Tyrion. Uh, one of Peter Dinklage's better episodes, I think, as well. <laughs> what are you laughing I'm at? I'm just laughing at AJ. First time someone touched Varys without removing a part of his body. Yes. Aww. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he'll be missed. He'll be missed. Yeah, um, yeah so uh, Tyrion. Uh, I think it was one of the better episodes for Tyrion in a long time. Um yeah. Peter Dinklage is just amazing and as I said I cried both times I watched this episode I cried with the scene of Jamie um, and he's yeah. just watched Danny destroy his family as well he he, he well he, he, yeah his acting chops were were yeah, I mean, you can you can see why he's won all these awards for his acting it was fantastic and it made me cry and it also it, it, there is something about all three of those Lannister siblings where that phrase that Jamie gives in the first episode, the things we do for love, everything can be justified for all three of them on that basis, the things we do for love. He's, you could look at this in lots of... A ty Tyrion for me, and I was saying this, I think, last night, is a really interesting character representing how they've developed the stories in the TV show in, the, in that you just don't know which way it's going to go. You don't know if Tyrion is going to survive even the first five minutes of the finale, because in reality, he should be roasted by dragon she, mm -hmm. she already promised if you make a mistake again, that's what's going to happen. So we're expecting that. But we also know that he's a very popular character. The actor is very, but you know, that would be something that would really, piss people off and I think they're going to want to see him in it right up until the end I maybe think, uh, th th there's split. every chance they'll piss people off <laughs> yeah well you could even flip that right over to the other end of the spectrum and say why not Tyrion and Sansa on the Iron Throne if there is even an Iron Throne at the end of this I mean it, it seems to be happen with Tyrion that he's the one that I just think I've got absolutely yeah. no idea gonna happen yeah it is great what you said there as well the things we do for love with the lannisters um even tywin in his twisted ways doing it for his family not necessarily mm. for love though maybe for legacy but it is interesting that the most hateful and hate-filled characters like cersei for instance and jamie at other times and Tyrion at other times um they have this really strange loving bond between them and even in like Lena Headey, that I had nothing to do this season, but she's still amazing. And that scene where she's just she's just a mother who doesn't want to die in those final scenes, and it's it's heartbreaking. And I do love like the poetry of the the towers falling in on them because that's one of the things that um, they didn't do in the show, I don't think, but they did in the book where uh, Cersei has that at the Tower of the Hand pulled down. So it's like it's a common theme throughout their nar their their kind of arc. This idea of towers and and what it means, and of course using the phrase of the two towers to 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 mm. perpetrate the red wedding and all that kind of thing. So it's I, interesting. I think <clears throat> I think she did the best job actually of the episode, even though she had very little dialogue. What she did say was to represent that horrendous emotional feeling and if you've ever had this type of feeling where something is that important to you, you will grasp 
hold of it and you will be delusional and you will deny and you will and right from and and a facial expressions match each time this happens to her doesn't matter the scorpions will get we just need one good shot but your grace they're all they're all gone it doesn't matter the golden Com no but they're gone it doesn't matter my every single time she was told that she was doomed she would counter that with but this is this will happen and that will I'm I, I'm okay I'm protected I'm the queen for God's sake this isn't going to happen and she just would not accept it even right up until the moment when she saw Jamie it was he he was the only person that was able to bring her around and pull her out of that and the moment you could see the moment all over her face where she just accepted it okay there are no more excuses this is this is it this is happening. She Nothing else matters. The things she, we do for love. Yeah, she's she was amazing, and like everybody's paying compliments to her in the chat as well. She has been amazing since series one. I for me, Amelia Clark was just terrific. When you think as well that Amelia Clark uh, had no one to play off on top of like she was surrounded by green screens on top of like you know yeah. a, a dragon, and the just the facial expressions just mm. incredible. Really showed a lot of growth this season. Amelia Clark for me um so yeah so both of us are kind of I mean I can see Tyrion turning to Sansa or Sansa using Tyrion to infiltrate what's happening and maybe John as well um mm -hmm. because John and Tyrion are like there's every chance that Danny will put both of them on the chopping block or she'll take them as hostages to as a, as a bargaining chip for other oh and summon Sansa yeah yeah or she might just get on Drogon with them kind of roped up <laughs> and rock up there like, you know, for 10 minutes in Winterfell and just blast everybody. I mean, it's not, it's not, Winterfell isn't defended. They've got what, Brienne and Sam? <laughs> um, so, yeah. do you think John got his mojo back in this episode? I loved that scene where he kills the rapist in the, in the archway. I really felt like this is John. John has come about. I think they're just, I, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, what's going on through John's head apart from, oh shit, what have I done? This is, I'm going to have to take, you know, some sort of responsibility for this because I should have stepped up. I should have done something more mm -hmm. than just being uncomfortable about realizing that this is my auntie. You know, she was much more strategic in that situation and it just really feels like John's kind of spinning around and not really knowing what to do but I think he's in danger I think Daenerys has already given Grey Worm some sort of order to just get and she's got no feelings whatsoever now that wall has gone up with when she stepped back and said okay this is how it is I'm going to have to rule through fear because I cannot make anybody love me. I can't make you love me. I can't make yeah. any of the small folk love me. This is not going to happen. And I've realized that now. So you don't get any more chances. That's that chance has gone. So he will, ha I, I, the, the only expectation that I've got is he's going to have to kill her, but I'm hoping from my perspective that it's a little bit more complicated than that and that we have more of the bittersweet element. And It will have to I, be more complicated. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of visualise how I would like all of that to go in my head and I think they can wrap it up quite neatly, really fairly quickly within the 80 minutes. But for my tinfoil, here it comes, is <laughs> that um, Arya kills Grey Worm, takes his face because she knows that Grey Worm is probably the only person at the moment that can get close enough to Daenerys. Um, and she goes for the kill with Daenerys. John, in his ridiculous, honourable way, defends Daenerys, even though Daenerys doesn't care about him. And he kills Grey Worm, who he thinks is Grey Worm, but it's kind of revealed, it's revealed as Arya. That's the bittersweet, you know, one Stark killing another Stark unwittingly. Something crazy like that. I, it's yeah. completely is completely tinfoil in it. it can't, I think it'd make everyone go. I don't think it is though. I yeah. I like it. Um, I also think like we there's no world. This world won't exist where. Or sorry, in this world, Grey Worm cannot exist without Danny. No. So d Grey Worm is definitely going to die. It just says he'll cheer when that when that happens. Um, I like. I think I like the idea of Arya taking the face to do that. I um 
I also have a bit of tinfoil on this. I don't. So Danny's paralyzed and Drogon. And mm. I still think we might see Arya attempt to kill Drogon. We might get Arya the Dragon Slayer. Mm. Um, why not? Um, oh, uh, Catherine Dodd says hello to you and Claire. He's enjoying the chat. Don't know what you're talking about, but at least we can see you. Love, Ma. Oh, thanks, Ma. Hi, Dad. Hi. How are you? Hi, Miss <laughs> Grace. Hello. <laughs> um, Pat. Good old Irish name. Um, yes, so I agree. An attack, then he'll go mad and kill Daenerys, maybe. But I still don't think he will want the, the Iron Throne. I think he will kind of abdicate that to somebody else, which is where maybe Sansa and possibly Tyrion come into it. Who knows? This could go so many different ways. Like I say, you've got to think about what you want to fit reasonably and plausibly into these last 80 minutes. And again, I've got to say this, how many TV shows that we've all been invested in as, as a fandom over years and years and years. Think of all the TV shows that you've watched and been really you know if nothing else investing your time in them that have been unsatisfactory at the end a ton of them they tend to be more unsatisfactory than not the only exception that i can think of is breaking bad um that that leaves you with that and that was only five seasons so they they were able to man you know they managed to do that i mean we could end up with a massive battle between cripples, bastards, and broken things yes. in, the, in the form of Tyrion, John, yeah. and Grey Worm. Um, yeah. And I really want to see, I like, John is, there's no love lost between John and Grey Worm now. John would have probably killed him there and then if he could. Um, I also, I'm not totally against the idea of Tyrion being the one to kill Danny. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I would be okay with that as well. Um, I agree I wouldn't like to see Arya do it necessarily. Arya as Arya. Arya as Grey Worm, maybe. But Arya as Arya, I'm not entirely sure. But there is also this thing, if we can just talk about Arya for a second sure. in that context of, is she going to kill anyone else? Is there anything bigger than what she's already done? We, sh we spent a lot of time in this episode with Arya trying to rescue people, looking at the destruction and devastation and, all, and that moment that she had with Sandor where he said, don't continue on this journey. Look what it did to me. You will literally just be consumed by revenge. That's the only thing that's going to drive you. Do you really want this to be your life? That's kind of, you know, that was his parting sort of life lesson to her. And when she said, thank you, Sandor, I think that was almost her accepting permission that she doesn't have to do this anymore. She's done her bit. Maybe she should just let go of that. That I mean, who, who else is on the list for her to kind of fulfil this revenge mission? I think so it's, it's like, way more. It's way more. I think in Arya's mind, if you like, in the mind of a faceless man, uh, Danny ha has tried to take on the role of the God of Death, and you're yeah. not allowed to do that in their world. You are not allowed to do what they just what she just did. Yeah. So that's that I I absolutely adored that scene with the horse. Mm -hmm. Um couple of reasons why. Uh, visually, it echo, it was echoes of a, a much more innocent Danny back in season one with mm -hmm. Silver, but also echoes of Lyanna Stark. The the first mm -hmm. time we see Lyanna Stark in the show, she's riding a white horse. And of mm -hmm. course, Arya is often um is often likened to Lyanna Stark. And I mm. liked that whole idea that maybe she's going to bring like this knowledge of Lyanna Stark to John and try and like convince him that this is that we need to get you on the throne. This, you cannot let this happen or something like that. Maybe it won't happen at all, but I kind of liked the, the reference, the visual reference because between those three women in the show, mm. um, and anyway, a white horse in general, just like the idea of innocence in all that destruction and Arya yeah. leading it out of the city. So is Arya going to be the one that's going to try and bring innocence back into this world, mm -hmm. which who knew that could even happen because of mm -hmm. what the things that Arya has done. Talk about yeah. new characters and very um, I'm Stuart. <laughs> Stuart is convinced that Arya is just going to, trot on off to Storm's End and decide, yeah, actually, Gendry, let's do this. Let's Wouldn't settle down and have a... Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be surprised. I actually even thought that myself at one stage. It's like, is Arya done with all of this? 
Mm. Uh, I mean, I, it's got to be said. I mean, I don't know if anyone's going to agree with me, but um, the Hound, Sandor Clegane, best character arc of the show. Yeah. Amazing. And really lifted that character from the book for me as well. Like really, like I, I liked the hound in the book, but the hound in the show is just fantastic. Um, and I think it ha he had to be the one to give her that lesson as well. Yeah, yeah. And in the same way that we hadn't seen Varys get touched in the show, it's been a while, apart from the Gendry stuff, that Arya has been touched from somebody you know, outside mm. of her family in a, in a meaningful way, except for maybe, um, what's her name, the actress in the... And it, it's, it, it, equally as well, it's probably been like forever that anyone's actually said Sandor to him rather than the Hound. Yeah, and their relationship. Oh. And we didn't need much. I mean, like when yeah. Dan and Dave are good, they're great. You know, like, I mean, we had that one scene where they left Winterfell and this one scene... Going in and it, let's and like and we had a little scene outside the the army, uh, mm. the camp. But like it didn't. We didn't need. We we had everything, and I wish they kind of employed that tactic a little bit more. We don't need the fill in the blanks all of the time. Um, you can say a lot with actions, and they could have done that. I think a bit more with Danny's character. Um, hi Moni and uh, Peter. Um, yeah. So, uh, Arya. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You think Arya might die as Grey Worm? I think again, there's a number of possibilities, of things that, that that could happen with Arya. The the indication was that last scene, which was just really beautiful and poetic and symbolic, symbolising a number of different things. Again, so but but my just taking that aside. Uh, just having this complete tinfoil moment, then, yeah, I think there are certain things that the show fandom are expecting. They saw a bit of wildfire during the last battle. They want to probably see Arya use, and I know that she's done it before with the phrase and everything, but I think they still want to, there's still that kind of, is she going to pull a face out of a bag? And, and do something like that at the end. And also, I do think, I think there's going to be something really bittersweet with a twist between John and Grey Worm. Yeah. Um, I mean, so that'd I think, be great. I think that would be brilliant. Yeah. But, yeah. And because I think that would be brilliant, it probably won't happen. <laughs> yeah, Hal, Halcyon says the Starks have show plot armour, definitely, yeah. you know, yeah. a, a, a mile thick, so that probably won't happen. But, yeah. I'm just allowing myself to reach for the last bit of crinkly tin foil on the roll before it all goes. <laughs> yeah. Um and I mean with Arya, I kind of I think they've done a really great job with her. I don't know if they'll kill Arya Stark. That's I think we might we should probably expect that plot armor to continue. Um mm. maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong, but uh John I don't know. John, I think, is probably safe as well, but who knows? Uh, we could, I think, jo I think Johnny thinks John is going to be our reluctant king, which could happen. I mean, I at mean, this stage, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's, that's a possibility for the show in that they're building that up, aren't they? Look how honourable John is. He is the reluctant leader, and he, but he, I don't think he's qualified. I don't think he'd do a very good job. Uh, I think he would be completely influenced by, you know, nefarious from nefarious sources. And I actually think Daenerys would probably do a better job. It's just that she's, yeah, she's lost the plot now. So, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think we're going to see Sansa march south with yeah. an army. I think yeah. that's a, and we're going to see Sansa take, I mean, Will King's Five Landing four. be like? Will we have King's Landing as the capital anymore? I like it. Looks like it's destroyed. There's every chance that we could see Harrenhal and oh. Sansa and whoever she manages to get descend on Harrenhal. Um, yeah, who knows? I mean, it, it's going to be quite bleak if they stay in King's Landing. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's some really that's good. That's 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 sorry, absolutely go on. right. Um, it's a common saying in Essos, but do we remember when Mel looked at Grey Worm while she was when she turned up at the Battle of Winterfell and said and looked him in the eye and said, Valar Mugullus? 
and he said all, all men must die yeah all men must said, uh, exactly yeah, yeah and he's yeah. certainly doing that yeah Grey Worm will serve Danny to the bitter end that is true um mm -hmm. yeah so uh I mean we talked a little bit about the Lannisters uh the Jamie and Cersei stuff and you're off <laughs> um yeah. Yeah. I mean you got your cracking coming out of the sea yeah <laughs> just not exactly uh by the way i mean his costume looked amazing it, like i don't know why it looked even better in this episode for some reason um i still like the actor who plays euron i think he, he's he had fun with it and i think that seems to it, it works for me um apparently i read I read somewhere that the he was directed to kind of he like you know okay you, you're dead now close your eyes and he refused to he just wouldn't he wouldn't oh. kind of play dead he'd right up until that he defied everybody and kind of kept his eyes open he did that you know it was a lot of it was he made um, the right choice it was much better yeah yeah much better he, uh, he kind of he, he he bullied his way into well not bullied his way but he sort of he made sure that it, it, there was a bit of improvisation in that and in the end they just left it. But he just refused to, like, no, I'm just going to look up at the sky, but I'm going to have my eyes open. I am not showing my eyes. Well, I, I was reading about him as well. Like, when he turned up to to get the part, he was really excited because he thought he was going to be, like, Book Euron. Like, he read it. He read Book Euron. He read oh, everything. Geez. He was expecting to get a patch. He was expecting to have the blue. He was, like, he was everything. So when he went to D&D &D and they're like, no, 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 we're not doing that. And he was like, oh. Oh, okay. He was really disappointed. Right. Oh, well, that's that's kind of that's good so, to know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, I kind of um, they called it in the inside the episode the Dane Bowl between him and uh, Jamie. Uh, yeah. I guess it was better that that happened. Maybe I don't know. It it is what it is. Uh, uh, I did like I did like the memes going around, like the the a brick with a smiley face saying no. <laughs> so I did like that, but um, yeah. So how do you, how do you feel about the their ending, the Lannister ending, the twins? Uh, yeah, like well, but yeah, the, like we said before, I think it was a fitting way. I think a lot of people expected the the Valencar, but in a way, it did happen. There were lots of. Uh, little brothers involved in that in the in that final scene so you you could even say that Tyrion sent them both off to, to death he said no Cersei's gonna, not going to make it she's not going to make it out of this why don't you go and spend the last moments with you know he basically sent Jamie off to his death in a way um so in, I, he, when it comes to the prophecy of somebody you know the the Valencar will wrap his hands around your thin white throat <clears throat> it, it it kind of did happen, but not in a literal sense. So Tyrion is a little brother. Euron again was a little brother. There's other little brothers in this store in this part of the story that led up to Cersei having the Valencar yeah. put in the hand. Is the Valencar yeah. thing in the show? No, it isn't. But I think I, again, I'm just pulling things out to kind of pander to book readers and like, oh, you know, that would have. Yeah. I mean, she's always had that younger, more beautiful queen. Um, we in the Maggie the Frog prophecy in the book. I think that I think um the Euron Euron. Oh, sorry, something happened there. <laughs> um, I think it would have been better if Euron, um, had been in had been inside the castle with Cersei and mm. had maybe been on that staircase with Cersei in the mountain and everything, and maybe he had kind of helped get Cersei to safety, and then Jamie turned up, and then there had been a kind of a, a bit of a, a battle, maybe, mm. um, or a bit of a fight there. There are, uh, and I, and I think this is probably just more but... interesting, but, uh, yeah, we, not, we never got oh, to play. Oh, you keep dipping in and out. Oh, do we? Yeah, I can, I, I'm sorry. I keep interrupting you because you're freezing. You keep dipping in and out. Hope oh, you're there now. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> hopefully you'll stay. Hopefully you'll stay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, what I was saying is, I think this is just one of those other reasons why people are trying to justify. Nope, this isn't going to happen. That was not. That wasn't my theory. This isn't how things are going to end for Jamie. So there's 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 quite a wave of people on the internet that seem to believe that can't possibly have happened and Jamie's still alive and it's like really. Also, uh, just because you don't like something doesn't mean that other people mm. can't like it, and it doesn't mean that they should be attacked for liking something. And that's what's really made me the sad about this fan family, it, the, it, the fandom this year. It is very grasping. This is all predicated, by the way, on evidence quote of uh, like post episode Twitter and Instagram pictures of the cast and the crew, and it's like, oh, where's Jamie? Where's the where's um, Nikolai Kostovaldo? He's not eating it. Yeah, he must therefore still be alive. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I just think I think you you obviously everybody's allowed to not like things. That's obvious but people are allowed to like those things <laughs> too yeah. and um it's just been it's kind of it's been nasty and very negative and i don't like it uh, th this petition thing is ridiculous yeah just yeah. ridiculous um so anyway we say goodbye to the lannisters we didn't talk about clegane ball um probably the best thing about this episode clegane ball it was amazing it was it for me, it was the thing that I feared the most because I just thought they're squashing this in. It's fan serve, you know. They're they're just they're just they're, they're going to have to do this, and they'll probably do it in a horrible way. And I thought they did a fantastic job. I thought it wrapped up his character story arc really well. Being plunged into back into the fire again. Um, I, the visuals of that. I th I said on MP's channel last night, you could make a poster of that aerial shot of the dragon flying overhead as as he's standing on the steps and looking up at his brother. It's just incredible. Uh, the way Kyber, Kyburn got thrown around like a rag doll was absolutely hilarious. Just like within three seconds, he was gone. Um, but yeah, it was, it was powerful. It was very, one of the things that I think it was DJ on the stream last night said that when Sandor knocked... Um, the the mountain's helmet off, and he looked him in in the face and said, "Yeah, that's you. That's always been you." It was like a mirror reflecting back on himself, and he was kind of saying that to himself as well. This is where we were always going to be. This was always going to be inevitable. Yeah, like um, that. Yeah. Again, I think you know it's an. We've had that nice, warm, fuzzy feeling of completion when we get a decent end to a character story arc like that as as desperately sad as it was and yeah I, don't, I know a lot of people are like we're expecting oh why didn't Arya sweep in and save him and you know they're supposed to be they're supposed to be buddies and why didn't she run in and save him but no I would have hated that to have happened actually and uh, so with know, the hand had, they, he would and that you know they had their moment and that that was enough but um yeah hmm I don't know if you keep freezing or if I keep freezing. I missed the last sentence of what you said there. Oh, uh, yeah. I just said that I think we should, you know, we should never have had Aria running in. I think they, they, the way they ended it was was well done. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. Um, yeah. And I loved that the mountain decided to not protect Cersei in that moment as well. I see AJ said, Kyburn, why burn? Um, yeah. can, can you please have a little bit more respect, AJ, for The Last Rain and Howland Reed? Hmm. <laughs> Which is like every theory that Kyburn, including mine, gone. Um, although yeah. we might still get a brawn payoff. We'll see. Uh it's, it, we'll talk maybe a little bit about what Bronn is going to do. I still think that Bronn is going to do something nasty up in the north. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on how quickly word reaches them. So mm. what does Danny, how does Danny get out messages? Because she doesn't have a maester. Presumably uh, Varys was doing that. So I'm yeah, not sure why I'm asking these questions. They won't even address that. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, so I guess all we have left to talk about is our predictions for next episode, yeah. our last ever yeah. episode. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit. We, we, we kind of covered all the characters that appeared in this episode. So I know you have an amazing Bran theory, if you want to oh, flesh is, it out. Okay. 
I'll go through this. Yeah, I'll go through my Brogon theory. Stuart will be rolling his eyes because he's heard this so many times. But I think if you, and I'm just honing in on Bran here, how do we, in the last episode, neatly wrap up Bran's story arc when he isn't even really Bran Stark anymore? He's doing all this, you know, I live in the past. I'm not really here. He certainly doesn't want to be the Lord of Winterfell. So what do we do with, with Bran the, the, in, in that category of cripples, bastards, broken things? And I think we need some sort of resolution to the horrible treatment and desperately sad storyline that was Hodor. So when Bran subjected Hodor to this horrendous life that he had trapped in this time loop um and, and there's a few things that kind of f flow into this theory there's thinking about and, but many many kind of book strands around Varamir's six skins and the advice that you get as a warg if you spend too much time in the animal that's it you they take over i think in order to subdue Drogon, you're going to have to have some kind of magical influence, especially if Daenerys dies before Drogon. Who's going to control this massive magical beast? Probably not Jon, without some help from somewhere. So my theory is, what if Bran walks into Drogon, ends up, because it's such a big, powerful, magical entity, becoming trapped inside Drogon's essence and mind. And so you have a physical body of Bran, but he can't function. He's just, you will never, never be able to reach him. He ages and maybe you can stick him in a tree somewhere or something, but that's the end of Bran. He's trapped in Drogon. And you can take that further into, um, you know, that's his fate. That's his, penance if you like for what happened to to Hodor but also um it's a way of John being able to subdue Drogon if John ultimately thinks I've had enough of this I'm going to put myself in exile I'm going back to where I really belong which is the true north and he gets on which is now Brogon because this does this combination between Bran and Drogon and they fly off to the north and because that's where Bran ultimately wants to be as the three-eyed raven um and that's where john's going to be truly happy and, it, and maybe even ultimately in the future he becomes this is in my complete fantasy land that will never happen um he becomes like the king the, the king of the north but the true north i love it um, i think it's great um <laughs> I, I lauren doesn't think they're going to do that but uh I don't think it's fair to say that the writers don't care i think they do care i think maybe they're just a little jaded to be honest yeah. The way this fandom has reacted, I wouldn't be surprised if George has gone, um, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't finish this off. Uh, yeah. It's going to be so hard to make people happy. Even in our chat, people are divided. Uh, it's just, yeah, I, I really like the idea of Brogon. I think that's it, it, it would be a beautifully poetic way for him to get stuck. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's definitely not going to be a direwolf. They're putting the CGI into a dragon. <laughs> so. There is there is some kind of, from a show perspective, there does seem to be some kind of strange connection between Bran and Drogon in that you get that visual aerial shot of Drogon flying to the Red Keep. And then we will remember, ah, that was part of Bran's vision way back in like a couple of seasons ago. So how did he see, you know, I, I know, I, I don't think Bran can see the future, but he does get flashes of things in visions. Mm. Yeah, mm. I uh, I think that would be, I think, I I hope that we get a Bran, that there's still a card to play here with Bran as a character. Yeah. Um, yeah. If nothing else, then maybe it'll give Sansa the edge to march already. Maybe she'll be much further south than we'll expect her to be, and then maybe Danny expects her to be. Bran mm. will be able to give Sansa p perhaps an edge militarily. Mil mm. <laughs> what if Bran walks into Danny and gets trapped inside her? Anyway, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, by the way, thanks, ma'am, for coming along. I, um, uh, Lauren says, what if Bran walks Danny and gets trapped in her? Oh, gosh. 
<laughs> We're all going to get trapped inside a dragon, and that's how it's going to end. <laughs> uh, I just, I think, uh, but there's a lot of people doing hashtag brogan. A lot of people like this. Um, <laughs> are you looking at all the comments about best uh, TV show? Yes, yes, I am. Yeah, Moni G, you need to go and watch Breaking Bad. It's excellent. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, she's yeah. definitely the Queen of Ashes. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a massive amount of King's Landing left for her to rule over. Uh, she's going to get taken down in this episode. She won't survive to the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hashtag broken. I still, I still <laughs> see Sansa on the throne at the end. With or right. without Tyrion by her side, I still think that we're getting Queen Sansa. I still think mm. we're going to get that. Um, Dan D and D have been very much behind the female protagonists in this show, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, regardless of what you think of how they've treated Danny's character, I think that we're definitely going to see. I th I feel we're we're going to see Sansa. Famous last words, of course, and this time next week it'll be bloody. I don't know. Gendry or someone on the throne um, but uh, uh, yeah I mean is there anything that they could do now that would complete like you would completely hate it if they ended if, is there an ending you would absolutely hate oh, and I'd be interested to know in the chat as well what would you absolutely hate for, the, for it to end I mean I I I don't know if we'll get a flash forward. We might we might get some... I don't know if we will get a flash forward kind of Harry Potter style thing or even uh, mm, Star I'm Wars sure. thing where, you know, they're pinning the little badge on everybody. I don't know if we're going to get that either. I think, we'll, I think we'll get a cliffhanger, but I think it'll be a kind of satisfying cliffhanger that makes you want to then watch the prequel um, I still really like Callum's theory that in the last sequence, the very last frame, we'll see somebody significant like Arya dying and then opening her eyes, ha having the blue eyes. So yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, Callum's still around, huh? <laughs> if yeah, if Arya kills Danny or Drogon, yeah. Um, I think I would be disappointed with John just predictably sitting on an iron throne that's just somehow managed mm. to survive all the devastation of King's Landing. There's the throne. Go and sit on it. Yay. And all, all the, all the small folk cheer and shout for it. Just that, that, that would be really disappointing. I think for me. Um, yeah. I can see, I can see them doing that too, though. I can favor it from the show anyway, for sure. Uh, and but I don't know. I, I I'm not I'm not entirely sure. What I kind of um Callum hates the idea of Arya killing Danny or Drogon. Um, it, what might be what might happen is Tyrion might try to kill Drogon because mm. we know he can approach the dragons. Now we haven't seen him really approach Drogon, but I'm sure Drogon is is familiar with him at this stage. But Tyrion might do something because. Tyrion, like, I mean, Danny isn't the only one that got hate in her heart, <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Right now, after this episode, there's a lot of people that aren't happy um, in, in King's Landing and with Danny. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I, I'm i hoping we get a battle between John and Grey Worm because we haven't really seen John fight any kind mm -hmm. of major end of this, uh, this season, apart from White's. Um, so I'd like to see that again. I want another John battle. I, I'm I'm happy with fan service and John fighting, um, but I I think a long protracted this is how this is how they are now ending would kind of annoy me a little bit. I don't think they have time for it really. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the only thing that would annoy me. Anything in the chat that you want to point to? I think there'll be lots and lots of. Uh, There'll be lots of characters. Where oh, we'll... um, being queen. 
Yeah, have I, I frozen don't... again? Have you frozen again? Yeah, I'm sorry, you keep freezing. And as soon as as soon as I talk, I'm talking over you. Sorry. Um, I think there will be a lot of unanswered questions for a ton of characters where we'll we'll end up at the end, whatever happens, going. But what about? Oh, and then there's you know, and there'll be a lot of that. Um, but you know, that will make for lots and lots of wonderful review and theory videos there's going to be a great uh, behind the scenes documentary where you get to see all the actors in the final rereads getting all emotional and stuff so there's 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 there yeah. are things to look forward to um john a you yeah, <laughs> yeah whether or not we're going to see the books quite quickly i i genuinely believe i'm of the opinion um, that he's waiting for this series to be over so that he can get Winds of Winter out. And I think it will happen quite quickly, e even like maybe within, before before the end of this year. So within the next few months, yeah. I, d I think he's, I don't think he's anywhere near finished. I mean, he released that blog, quite an angry blog, <laughs> not mm. a blog blog this week saying that he's kind of sick of seeing that out there that he's finished the a, one or both of the books um and but i think claire you're probably right that this will give him the creative freedom to move mm. forward once it's out of the cultural like discussion once it's out of like once yeah. people are no longer talking about game of thrones cuz let's, let's be fair it's an amazing show but People will stop talking about it very, very quickly, uh, and they'll be moving on to something else, like his dark materials. Which have have you seen the trailer? Looks amazing. Very excited no, about that. Yeah, very yeah. excited about that. Um, but yeah, as people will move on to other things, and yeah. uh, I think that will give that will take the pressure off George as well, uh, and hopefully he'll get his mojo back. Um, John says, of course, he would have to say that publicly, Catherine. I, I'm, yeah. You're all very skeptical. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why you would lie. <laughs> uh, well, at the, end of, at the end of the day, we, however long it takes, we're we're going to be able to sit back and say, well, at, at least we've got the books, and you know, there's there's going to be that yeah. that will be completely and he different. Doesn't, he doesn't have to say anything public. Like he doesn't yeah. say after. He doesn't have to. Like he he's clearly coming out because as an artist, he's feeling the pressure too. And I'm mm. sure it's not very nice to see the way the show is being attacked, he, whether he agrees with how they've gone with certain story arcs or not. I think it's it's got to be quite difficult for George at this stage to see his baby, <laughs> even in another guise, be attacked and to see characters he's created. Meridian saying that, <laughs> George put that on his blog because he well I think that's what she's saying because he's a total tro total troll yeah and that could be the case that could be him just going no I'm nowhere near ready please stop asking any questions oh and by the way boom here's Winds of Winter <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe I, I yeah yeah the trolley of the trolliest yeah I don't build yourself Selves up any hope. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still there, uh, Kat? I think we're going to be in for my like killing Brienne. Did I freeze again? Yeah. <laughs> Although I don't know, it could be me. I'm not sure. Um. Oh, Mackenzie's just arrived. Hi, oh. Mackenzie. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just literally I, wrapping up. Uh, I. Yeah, no, no, I did, did you hear my prediction? Oh, no, we're no, I didn't hear it. <laughs> Guys, can you hear me in the chat? Hello, I can hear you. Oh, okay, perfect. I don't know, you froze on me. Um, yes, yeah, so my didn't... big prediction is that Braun is going to do something diabolical like attempt to kill Brienne and maybe even succeed. Oh, that would be terrible because he's not getting his castle. No, he's not. He's going to be very disappointed, isn't he? He's going to be yeah. very disappointed. Um, Ooh. Yeah, I'm kind of scared, but... And... Hello? 
feel like there has to be some bloody pain. Yeah, I'm here. I don't know which of us keeps freeze freezing. <laughs> I think you're good now. You're good now. Okay, cool. I'm going to turn my camera off and see if that makes any difference. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I it is choppy. Sorry, everyone. Um, here we do keep freezing. I think it's probably both of us. It's this European internet connection. Um, yeah, I'm. I was. What I was saying is, I'm. I'm excited. I'm kind of nervous. I'm also, in a strange way, I'm going to be quite happy when it's just done and over, and I can kind of just put that to one side, go back and rewatch and enjoy it for what it is. But it won't have the same impact on my enjoyment of the rest of the novels. Yeah, apparently I'm the problem, not you. Mm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um yeah so I, I i am looking forward to it i think um i'm looking forward to the ending as well actually because it but i i have to say i've thoroughly enjoyed this season mm. um even with all the problems and it's been very helpful in getting me through a very difficult point in my life mm. and i just love how i've met so many people through game of thrones yeah and i think that's why it's hard for people not to take these things personally online when they see it getting attacked or people trying to defend decisions that dnd have made and things they don't like i think it's because we have built such a big community as well and Unlike people have made people. lifelong friendships through this community absolutely but there's also you know let's not forget that people do get very very invested in their wonderful out there theories and they're great everybody should be able to you know come up with some really creative theories and search your brain in around how you know possibilities and different options and how that links into other works of literature and just generally other areas of life but I, I think don't take it too seriously I know people put so much time into like theory crafting but I think this is one of the reasons why there's been such a, a, a negative response to this season is um yeah people's theories just haven't panned out the way they expected them to so it which is fine you know just 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 chill out a bit over that yeah, yeah it don't... isn't a comment on your intellectual capabilities exactly <laughs> like don't yeah i mean it's and um and i think you know when you when you watch the inside the episodes i don't like the way people are saying that that D and D in particular are lazy or bad or kind of crap or yeah. I, I feel like everybody is putting in they, they've dropped the ball on certain things for sure but I think the work that goes into these shows is just incredible yeah. really I mean like they built that entire staircase just for the game ball yeah. Um, yeah I mean it's incredible absolutely like the technique the technicians and the skills and the artistry involved is just incredible uh, just um, visually incredible. As yeah. always, yeah. Incredible. Um, I would say I have some, the only other TV show that I'm looking forward to, apart from His Dark Materials, is Rick and Morty, another trailer that dropped this week. So uh, mm -hmm. just for the, all the talk in the chat about the best show on TV, um, I love Game of Thrones and it is the best show for me on TV, but followed very closely by Rick and Morty. <laughs> I adore Rick and Morty. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so any final thoughts, Claire? Are you going to get yeah. up and watch it early tomorrow morning? I, I've got, I've got a, I've got a really busy day at work on Monday, so I'm trying to decide whether or not just to get an early night and get and just wake up really early without having watched any, seen any reviews or spoilers, and just watch it before I go to work. But I just, it's going to be one of those days where I'm not going to be able to focus or concentrate on anything, and I really need to. It's a busy day on Monday, or I could just leave it till I get home on Monday night. I don't know. I haven't decided yet because I'm probably going to spoil myself if I do that. So I don't know. Okay. We, we get it on Monday here in the UK at 9pm. That's that's the sort of main show, although we can, we can uh, get it at 2am on Sunday, but I very much doubt I'll, I'll stay up for that, to be honest. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to stay up either. I think I'm just going to do what I've been doing and just get up early on Monday and watch it. Um, I, wish it was, I wish it was a bank holiday on Monday, we, but it's not. It's the bank holiday is the week after. So, um, 
But I suppose we'll be spending the following weekend just discussing everything. So, Can I just say, though, Claire has said this pretty much for all the episodes. And I wake up on Monday morning and I watch the episode and then I check Instagram and there's like messages from Claire. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to be able to help myself. Let's let's admit it. Yeah. Uh, people have Peter. I like your tinfoil. Rick and Morty are the same person. We need to talk about that sometime. I think. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a, I have. I do you watch Rick and Morty, Claire? No, but you, I know you've spoken about it lots and done lots of wonderful nail art. So I should. Um, yeah, I, I I should catch up on that. Really, yeah. Callum, same busy day on Mondays in court all day. So it's, yeah, avoiding the internet like a plague, it's difficult. You know, we check our phone as human beings so many times a day and there's, it's just so easy to trip up. So, yeah, just switch your phone off, Callum. Don't even look at it until you've watched the episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be even, uh, we've talked about this before, it'll be even worse when the book come out, comes out. <laughs> Oh my god! I, yeah. I'm just gonna. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to handle I'm that. Just gonna, I'm just gonna have to take some holiday straight away. <laughs> yeah, as soon as we know. Hopefully, they give us a couple of months to to prepare. Oh. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for being in the chat. I hope you enjoyed the final episode. Um, even if you don't agree with everything, I hope that you get something out of the episode because I, I certainly have gotten a lot out of this show. I mean, I have my friendship with Lisa and Claire in many mm-hmm. ways thanks to this show. So, um, and my friendship with a lot of people in the chat too. So I am definitely, um, I'm definitely excited about it. I, I My excitement hasn't waned at all. Um, Peter, you're like killing me with the Rick and Morty stuff. I'm going to have to go to my husband now and talk about this straight away because he's a <laughs> massive <laughs> I really like the idea. Um, but thank you so much to everybody in the chat. Claire, do you have anything you want to finish on? No, just excitement really for you know r- wrapping everything up. So I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, just have a good one, everyone, and we'll yeah. we'll we'll check back in and make sure everyone's okay next week. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a collective uh hangout hug and yeah. uh Please go and check out um, uh, Johnny B. Crazy's video um, with Mackenzie and Claire from last night and also um, MP's video with Callum and DJ and Claire. I absolutely adore your conversations with the guys and (laughs) DJ, keep those guys in in check. I saw DJ was kind of taking your role this week. Yeah, (laughs) great, DJ. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic weekend.